Hi, I'm Ryan Key. Um, I'm presenting the poster transmission of a defective interfering particle in persistent than the incidence using a phylogenetic approach. Uh, I think it is a backbone disease causing by an RNA virus which affects 100 million people. Um, so in 2006, Pascal et al. reported the transmission of a defective interfering particle uh, with Dengue 1 from 2001 uh, to 2002 in Myanmar. Um, so in, in this study, we are interested in what kind of mechanisms allow this transmission of a defective interfering particle. And also we want to know uh, what the impact is uh, defective interfering particle on the transmission of wild type dengue. Um, uh, to answer these questions, we first they, uh, constructed a, a phylogenetic tree using the sequences isolated uh, in the paper shown here. So uh, what they did, they, they isolated 20 sequences in uh, 15 individuals, including 11 uh, human individuals and 4 mosquito individuals. We firstly uh, clustered each sequence uh, according to uh, the individual they isolated and also um, according to different lineages detected along all these sequences. Basically there are three lineages. Um, so the stop pattern lineage which is, which is a defective interfering particle um, uh, shown in the blue and uh, uh, the first lineage which is the big tree here uh, shown in, in the second row and there is another second variant image. So we, uh, uh, we uh, derived the consensus sequence for each category in these blocks, then constructed this tree uh, according to, to these consensus sequences. Then we can estimate the date of the uh, uh, defective in interfering particle emergence, which is estimated between March 1999 and uh, February 2001. Um, we'll use this information later on to estimate the impact on wild type dengue transmission. Um, another interesting feature is that we found uh, uh, all the first lineage sequences isolated from the uh, uh, in effect in individual um, uh, shown in red. They all fall closely to the stop pattern lineage, which suggests the um, uh, possibly tape is transmitted by uh, co-transmission uh, along with the water type. Then we constructed this uh, compartmental model using uh, uh, a previously developed uh, human and dinky uh, model. Um, we uh, estimated the contribution of co-transmission. We found that uh, in order for uh, the uh, defective interfering particle to uh, transmit it sustainably more than one, one year, um, the co-transmission coefficient has to be greater than one, which means greater than the uh, dengue transmission, wild type dengue transmission. Then we um, further um, uh, estimated the, the value of this increase in the co-transmission uh, transmission potential, which the estimated value is uh, 1.3, which means the co-transmission is 1.3 uh, fold increase compared to the uh, wild type dengue transmission only. Um, then we further, using this value, we further, further um, estimated the, the, uh, the impact of uh, uh, defective interfering particle on the wild type dengue transmission, which is estimated two fold increase uh, during 2001 and 2002. If we compare our estimation with uh, the case reports from WHO, uh, as you can see here, there is a market increase in during 2001 2002, which is consistent with what our estimate. Therefore, we conclude uh, transmission of defective interfering particle increases.